Hello, this is Miss Finn from the Literacy Lab. Today we are going to be reading Chesapeake Bay Wetlands by William B. Rice. Water, water everywhere. Did you know that 70% of Earth's surface is covered by water? Long, ragged coasts meet vast oceans of water all over the world. But what happens when the water meets the shore? Do you imagine long, sandy beaches? Do you think of big waves crashing into bigger cliffs? Both types of shorelines are common, but there is another kind of coast as well. There, the waves are gentle. Instead of sand, tides flow in and out over soil that is covered with plant life. Animals of all kinds make it their home. The wetlands of Chesapeake Bay are such a place. Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay is a beautiful place where the water meets the land. Located in the eastern United States, it is a large bay surrounded by Maryland, Virginia, and the Atlantic Ocean. People come from all over to sail, fish, and sightsee there, but the bay is more than a great vacation spot. Among other things, it is a home to some of the most famous coastal wetlands in the world. The long, ragged coast of the Chesapeake Bay is perfect for wetlands. Fingers of water push inland from the bay. They constantly feed the wetlands and the animals and plants living there. Why Chesapeake? The name Chesapeake comes from the Algonquin Indian word Chesapeake, which means Great Shellfish Bay. The Algonquins are some of the earliest people we know to have lived in the Chesapeake Bay area. Chesapeake Coast. Maryland's coastline is only about 30 miles from north to south along the Atlantic Ocean, but all the fingers and inlets of the Chesapeake Bay make the coastline more than 3,000 miles long. What is it? Bays are bodies of water that are partly surrounded by land and have a wide mouth. They are connected to a much larger body of water. Chesapeake Bay is connected to the Atlantic Ocean. The wetlands. In Chesapeake Bay, there are many plant and animal habitats. One of the largest habitats is the wetlands. In wetlands, plants and animals live both above and below the water. There are different kinds of wetlands. Some have mainly trees with a few bushes. Others have mainly grass, grasses and bushes with a few trees. Chesapeake Bay has both kinds of wetlands. What is it? A habitat is a place where a group of the same kinds of plants and animals live together at the same time. It is something like a neighborhood. Chesapeake Bay has both woody and grassy wetlands. What makes an area a wetlands? There are some key features. The first is, of course, the water. Wetlands have shallow water. The freshwater wetlands of the Chesapeake Bay are just a few feet deep. The tidal wetlands are shallower or deeper depending on the tides. Where does the water come from? Freshwater wetlands get their water from streams and rising groundwater. Tidal wetlands get their water from those sources too, as well as from the ocean. Some of the sources of water for the Chesapeake Bay wetlands are the Atlantic Ocean and the Potomac, James, Rappahannock, and Susquehanna rivers. This diagram shows part of the Chesapeake Bay and the surrounding area as though it were cut right out of the earth. Can you see in this diagram some of the ways in which the Chesapeake Bay gets its water? This is how the Chesapeake Bay looks from high in space. High and low tides. In tidal wetlands, deep water comes with high tides. Shallow water comes with low tides. Wetlands are homes to certain kinds of plant life. The plants are especially able to live in water and wet soils all year long. When the plants and trees die, they fall into the water and begin to decay. Animals, insects, and bacteria use the decaying material, usually for food. The animals of the wetlands also are especially able to live in the conditions there. Their bodies help them to move and live in the water. Long-legged birds. The Chesapeake Bay wetlands are filled with long-legged birds. They have a body type that helps them do very well in the wetlands. 
Their long legs keep their bodies above the water while their feet are standing on the ground below it. Snails are especially suited to the water and plant life of the Chesapeake Bay. Bacteria. Bacteria are very tiny organisms. They can only be seen with a microscope. They swim in the wetlands and live on the rocks, soil, and plants there. Bacteria help to keep the wetland water clean by eating away some of the harmful things found there. The importance of wetlands. In the past, some people didn't realize how important wetlands are. They thought that wetlands were just a waste of good space. So they filled in some wetlands with dirt or drained away the water. They put in roads, farms, and houses. Large areas of wetlands were destroyed because people didn't know all the important things that wetlands do for the environment. So why are wetlands important? This wetlands has been filled with dirt for houses to be built. The housing lots will provide water access for the owners, but the access will cut off for everyone else to enjoy. When wetlands are preserved, as in this photo, they provide access for everyone. Today, we know that wetlands are a natural habitat. They are a home for animals and plants that need them to survive. We also know that wetlands slow down floodwaters. This cuts back on the erosion that flooding can cause. Erosion is what happens when water and wind wear away the land. Wetlands help to protect the land from the effects of floods. The waters that flow into wetlands also drop small pieces of sand and silt. They can cause problems in other bodies of water if they are allowed to move on. Wetlands keep them where they are supposed to be. Finally, wetlands filter out chemicals and pollution caused by people and keep them from traveling to other bodies of water. Food chains. Many fish swim to the wetlands to spawn. Their eggs and hatchlings provide food for other animals there. So, food chains sometimes begin in places like the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. Good for people. Throughout history, areas near wetlands have always been good homes for people too. These areas provided natural harbors for the boats used for transportation, a good source of food, and a convenient way to get rid of waste. In fact, the first permanent English settlement in the United States was Jamestown on the Chesapeake Bay. Wetland plants. All plants need water, but some plants like water all the time. Bulrushes are some of those plants. Bulrushes grow both above and below the water of the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. They are green, tall, and skinny, and look like tall grass. Bulrushes are recognized by their flowers and fruit. The flowers are big reddish brown and shaggy. Now that's tall. Bulrushes grow taller than people do. That's great because tall wetland plants help animals. They provide places for birds to nest and animals to hide safely. Ducks and geese build their nests in clumps of bulrushes. Another Chesapeake Bay wetland plant is the cattail. Cattails are very strong plants, similar to bulrushes, but they grow even taller than bulrushes do. Their flowers are round, thin, and brown. They are shaped like a cat's tail. That's why, where they get their name. Cattail blossoms. Cattail flowers pop open in the autumn. Their fluffy seeds are carried away by the wind. A bird often seen around cattails is the red-winged blackbird. Wetland animals. The Chesapeake Bay wetlands are a great place for animals that love water. One of those animals is the muskrat. Muskrats are like small beavers. They have long, flat, black tails like beaver tails, but skinnier. Their fur is brown and waterproof. They make their homes by digging into the ground or building houses out of plants. You can imagine that frogs like, like wetlands too. Frogs are amphibians, and amphibians spend all or part of their lives in water. The northern green frog is common in the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. What color do you think it is? You guessed it, most northern green frogs are green, but sometimes they have a brownish color 
and some are even blue. They all have white bellies with dark spots on their backs. When northern green frogs croak, they sound like someone is plucking a banjo. Tasty bugs are a favorite meal for northern green frogs. Dragonflies. Dragonflies are large insects often seen in the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. They fly fast and catch small insects in the air. Wading birds walk or stand in shallow water, looking for fish or insects to eat. Great blue herons are very common wading birds in the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. They are large with long legs, long necks, and sharp bills. Oddly, great blue herons are not blue, but mainly dark gray with some brown and white feathers. Black feathers stick up from the tops of their heads. Crabs, clams, and oysters are very important to the wetlands. They are harvested from the shallow bay waters for people to eat. Many people who live in the area work in the shellfish industry. Great blue herons, such as this one, are seen throughout the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. Imagine that. Great blue herons can have a wingspan of up to six feet. That's how far it is from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other when its wings are spread out. Blue crabs. Blue crabs are often seen in the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. Their paddle-shaped rear legs help the crabs to swim well. The blue crab is also very interesting for the way it molts its shell. In this stage, it is called a soft-shelled crab. That is when it can be harvested and the whole crab cooked and eaten. Clams use the wetlands as a nursery for their babies. Visiting the Chesapeake Bay wetlands. Animals and plants love the Chesapeake Bay wetlands, but what can people do there? The wetlands are a favorite spot for bird watching. People say that there's nothing quite like the sight and sound of a great flock of birds settling onto the wetlands. Of course, if you are a scientist, you might enjoy studying the wetlands and everything that happens there. In fact, scientists study the wetlands all the time. People come from all around to visit and enjoy the wetlands. Over time, scientists became concerned about Chesapeake Bay and the wetlands there. They noticed that sea animals and plants were dying. The water was polluted by chemicals. In the 1970s, Congress passed laws to protect the animals and water. People began to clean the bay and to help the wildlife. Because of their hard work, the Chesapeake Bay wetlands would be beautiful and full of life for a long, long time. Thanks for reading about the Chesapeake Bay wetlands with me today. I hope you enjoyed our story.